Good morning, afternoon, or evening, dudes. Dudettes. This week, we're coming at you with another food DIY. We hope you're hungry. We're actually out of town right now. We're visiting some family for the holidays, so we're changing the setup a little bit. But we are still here to bring you another video this week. This week, we're going to be bringing a little treat to the table. So we hope your bellies are ready and your waistbands are loose for some old-style potato candy, homemade apple cider, and some coffee bean bark. We're going to start out with our apple cider since it will take the longest. It's still a pretty simple recipe. All you need is 3 quarters of a cup of sugar, 1 tablespoon of cinnamon, 1 tablespoon of allspice, and 10 of the shiniest red apples that you can find quartered. Once all your apples are cut up, you want to add them to your pot and cover them with enough water that if you press them down, it's, they're about two inches below the surface. Add in your sugar, allspice, and cinnamon. Give it a stir. Then you want to put that on your stove top on high and bring it to a boil. This needs to boil for one hour. Once that first hour is up, you want to turn it to simmer and cover it. And you're going to let that simmer for an additional two hours. After the two hours, this is what you're going to be left with. As you can see, the apples have pretty much disintegrated and turned into a mush. You're going to strain your apples. Cheesecloth works very well for this, or a very fine mesh strainer. Any of the solids can be thrown away. You can strain it multiple times or through finer strainers for less pulp or more pulp, depending on how you prefer. two of these awesome glass jars left over from our favorite apple juice and refilled those. Now on to our potato candy. You want to start with two medium potatoes. You're going to boil these until they're tender, meaning you can stick a fork or knife into them and meet little to no resistance. This is a life hack. If you boil potatoes and then quickly run them under cold water, you can cut a slit all the way around and peel them super easy. Just give a little twist and a little tug and the peeling comes right off. Cut my potatoes up a little bit to make them easier to mash. After you do this, you want to make sure they're thoroughly mashed and you have no chunks left. 
I'm going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla and two tablespoons of butter. Mix that all together and get it nice and well incorporated. Next, you're going to start adding your powdered sugar. This is not an exact measurement because it's really going to depend on the size of your potatoes. For me, I used about six pounds for the two potatoes that I used. Basically, while you're mixing it, you want to get a consistency that's similar to a dough. You'll see it gets extremely wet and then it starts drying out the more powdered sugar that you add. Once it started getting to an almost dough-like consistency, I found it easier to get a handful out and work with it a little bit at a time. This will make multiple batches or multiple rolls. Once you get to this point, you can grab a handful out, sprinkle your surface, and knead it until it gets a firm yet pliable consistency. After this, you want to flatten it out and cover it with peanut butter. You just have to roll it. You can cover this with a little bit of additional powdered sugar and this will just help it keep its shape. You can also powder sugar your knife as you're cutting it to keep it from sticking when you make the individual slices. Now on to the coffee bean bar. You want to start out with a full 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. We started ours out at 2 minutes. After the first minute, you're going to remove it from the microwave and give it a nice stir. We microwaved ours an additional 30 seconds, took it back out and stirred again. You're going to continue doing this in small time increments until you get a smooth consistency like this. Now you can add your coffee beans. This is one cup. Mix until well combined. To make this easy, you can spread it out on a baking sheet covered with wax paper. as even a layer as you can, spreading with the back of the spoon. Once you're done spreading it out, you can pop it into the freezer like we did for about 5 to 10 minutes and it'll be frozen solid. Lay an additional sheet of wax paper over the top, and this is just to help it keep from melting as you're handling it, and you can break it into chunks. Now it's time to plate and serve. These make a perfect dessert tray after a big holiday dinner. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed this week's DIY. We know we did. We're going to have to take a little nap now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you nail that like, like button. button. Hammer, Hammer that, that subscribe, subscribe button. button. Be back next Be week. Be back next week. For the next video. Yeah.